What's going on everybody? Tom here with Keto Lifestyle and today we are going to be making a keto friendly pizza. Now, I know what you're thinking, making pizza's got to be hard, just like making bread, but I'll tell you what, making a keto pizza is far easier than making a non-keto pizza. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is preheat our oven to 400 degrees, so I'm going to do that right now. Now while that's preheating, you're going to need a microwave safe bowl. Please don't use metal, this is going in your microwave guys. And to this bowl, we are going to add three cups of mozzarella and four tablespoons of cream cheese. Now that we have our ingredients in this bowl, we're going to go ahead and put it in the microwave for a total of about a minute. I like to break mine up into 30 second chunks and mix it. Um, some of my cheese is frozen though, so I'm going to end up having to do this for about 70, 75 ch seconds. That's a pro tip for you guys. If you buy mozzarella in bulk, it freezes really, really well. Now that this has come out of the microwave, your cheeses should be melded into kind of one ball of liquid cheese. And you're going to want to work a little bit quickly here because it will start to cool down. So now to this mixture, you're going to add two eggs and one and a half cups of almond flour. Also, it does help if you bring your eggs up to room temperature, that way it doesn't cool this down. If it does get kind of gummy and sticky, you can put it back in the microwave to kind of warm it up a little, but be a little bit careful not to cook the eggs in the microwave. like this now. You want to mix this until you are certain that there's no like streaks of parm or of, uh, mozzarella cheese or any of that in there. You want this to be completely incorporated. And it is going to be quite sticky if you can't tell. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll it out between two sheets of parchment paper. Now I do not have a pizza stone so I'm just using a baking sheet. But if you have a pizza stone feel free to roll it in a circle. Since I'm using a baking sheet I'm going to go ahead and just roll mine in a rectangle right on the sheet. So I have successfully rolled out my pizza. You want it to be somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. A little too thick and it's going to take forever to bake and it's not really going to taste that great, but too thin you're going to burn it. Now that we've got this laid out, we're going to stick it in the oven for about 10 minutes. The oven just beeps so it's up to 400 degrees. After 10 minutes we'll pull it out and top it. So I just pulled the crust out and you'll notice that there is a bit of a bubble there. One quick solution to that, just bang it around a couple times, the bubble will disappear. There we go, no more bubble. Now another thing you could do is before you cook it, you can stab it with a fork. Personally, I find that it doesn't really do as good of a job as just letting it bubble up and then hitting it down. Because remember, this isn't fully cooked in the inside yet, right? The, um, when we bake it with the toppings on there, then we're going to fully cook the crust. But now it is time to top this thing. I know there are a ton of different pizza variations that you can make. Today we are just going to be sticking with mozzarella cheese and pepperonis. And some of the sauce that we made in the last video where I made the pizza boats, link's going to be in the card right here. That sauce is left over in the fridge, so we're going to go put some of that on there. But I have in the past made pizzas that are Alfredo sauce, I've used barbecue sauce and pulled pork, I've made taco pizzas, whatever you guys are feeling, just keep track of the macro macros. But for the sake of simplicity, this is going to be that sauce from last video, some mozzarella, and some pepperonis.
our pizza is topped and my dog is fed. Now this thing's gonna go in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes. You wanna peek on it periodically because you don't want the crust to burn. At least personally, I really dislike the, cr the taste of burnt almond flour. Some people love making their crusts, their crusts crispy. Wow, say that five times fast. If that's you, go for it. More power to you. I don't like the flavor of it, so I like to leave mine kind of in that golden brown range, but not too dark brown. Anyway, 12 to 15 minutes, this thing's going in. All right guys, as you can see here, I pulled it out. When it was about a golden brown color, I don't like mine much darker than this. I can't stand the taste after this point. So what I need to do is I need to let this cool down for about 10 minutes or so because if you try to cut into it right now, your cheese is just gonna reattach and rip off the pizza. It's, it's kind of a mess. So give it 10, 15 minutes to cool down, slice it up, and I'll meet you back here for a taste test. Well everybody, the pizza is cooled and here is a slice. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Couldn't even tell this was keto pizza unless you really knew. So first test, we'll pick it up. Kind of feels like a pizza. Now let's give it a taste. That is killer, guys. There's just enough seasoning in the sauce, so definitely check out that sauce recipe. The cheese is perfect. The crust is a little bit spongier than a real pizza crust, but trust me, you will not notice the difference. But with that, guys, I'm gonna close with the video. If you liked the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Helps me out a lot, and you get to see more cool recipes like this. But with that, guys, I will see you in the next one.